Welcome to Senior Night here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse for women's gymnastics between the Bowling Green Falcons and the Pitt Panthers. Jeff Hathorne and Olivia Miller, we will be calling the action here for the final home meet of the year for Pitt. And Olivia, you've been through this day. You know, you go through all that work, all that, all the practice. You probably remember fondly your first day being in here, and now it's your last. There is just nothing quite like senior night. There's nothing that really simulates the emotions that you feel competing at your last competition here in your home facility. It's, it's both bittersweet, you know. You're excited to finish up your career, but yet also, like, you're sad, for sure. We know families are going to be here. So, you know, as much as for all these gymnasts, uh, of all, everything that they do, the support from their families, and that is another thing that's cool about senior night is because kind of they get recognized. And I think you probably felt this way. You wanted to say thanks to your family for everything that they've done to get you here. It is definitely a family sport, that is for sure. Family support, friend support. It's, it all comes together on senior night, and it's great to see everybody kind of celebrate the career that you've had as an athlete. So I know the girls are really looking forward to having that here tonight in the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Panthers will be in typical Olympic order, so the Panthers will start on ball for Bowling Green on on even bars and for BG there's been some up and down this year but I know this is a great opportunity for them you go to an ACC school chance uh, you know they haven't won here since 02 but if you're able to get a win it could really set up maybe a postseason run I mean who knows what it could lead in even towards next year yeah having some non-conference competition at the end of the season is always just a great experience and you know I know Bowling Green and Pitt are looking to have a really great competition here tonight Kennedy Duke, who will be doing the all-around once again, coming off an all-around win. She will start us off on vaults. Yeah, Duke has been an incredible athlete here for the Panthers, setting a new career high in all-around last weekend against West Virginia, and she's looking to get the Panthers rolling here on vault. And just a sophomore. Starting off with a really clean Yurchenko full there. You can see she did a Yurchenko full twist with a small step back. So a really great way for the Panthers to start off their night here. Really important as that first athlete to just be able to set the tone for the rotation on each of them. And being that first athlete up, you want to be a, a strong competitor and a, a really solid spot in the lineup to help bring confidence to the rest of the, the lineup here. Thank you, Alto, for Bowling Green. Unfortunately, just a little bit. A little bit over there on that cast handstand, which you'll have to come off. It's always great, though, to see a competitor being aggressive and really making sure that they're able to hit each handstand. So it's really important to just get up and finish the routine because you never quite know which routines will count in the lineup. Back down to the low bar with the shoot over. Unfortunately, she just seemed a little bit, a little bit crooked there, just trying to find her rhythm back for the rest of this bar routine here. Blind pull into a double tuck. Small step forward. So routine that Bowling Green might not be the most thrilled with, but again, it's just the first routine, so there's lots of room to, to build here for Bowling Green. Nine seven seven five for Kennedy Duke. Maria Simons up next for the Panthers. A fifth year here for the Panthers, being one of those seniors that's being recognized here tonight. Kuchenko full looks like a bit of a step forward there, but again, a really solid vault here for the Panthers. And right now, a lot of the vaults we're seeing from Pitt will be starting from a 9.95, where in gymnastics, a perfect score is a 10.0. So, so far, we have not seen a vault that starts from that perfect 10, but we will see one, I know, for the Panther lineup later here tonight.
Kira Thornton up next for BG. Thornton just a freshman. And probably has some friends on the pit team. She's from the UK as well. Yeah, again, it's, it's really awesome to see the NCAA really expand and have a lot of international student athletes. I know the Panthers have multiple international student athletes, and it's great to see Bowling Green does as well. Just, again, expanding the NCAA has been great and giving opportunities to athletes from all across the world here. So it's always an adjustment coming from anywhere to college, for sure, and competing in college gymnastics. It's just very different than basically any of your club career, for sure. We already have the second score up for the Panthers, 9-7-5 for Simons. Now Thornton. Beautiful pass hands center the low bar. Maloney back down to the low bar with a pass. Another really solid handstand here. Beautiful full out dismount. Unfortunately, a little bit of a chest down landing, so I have to take that hop forward, but a really solid way for the Falcons to get back on track here over on yeah. bars. You're looking for a little momentum to get it going again. Raina Garvey is up now. Hometown here in Pittsburgh, our high school about 10 miles or so from here. Solid Yurchenko full, step back on that landing, but again, you'd like to see the athletes be explosive and have a really high block off the table and a really, really open flat hips on that full. Raina does a great job of that. It's been great to see Raina back in the lineup here after not competing on vault for the beginning of the season. And she's been right back into it here as her second competition vault of the 2024 season. Megan Bingham is up nine times this year. She has been on the podium, not necessarily in this event, but overall. Bingham, the sophomore from Louisville, is waiting for that score. Next week is Megan Bingham. And now we're set. Free hip straight into a Takacha there. Another really aggressive handstand. It's really been great to see the Falcons really go for these handstands. Being straight up and vertical. Just the dismount left here for Bingham. A double layout. A little bit of a larger step backwards, but again, a really aggressive routine here for Bowling Green. Did you find as the year went on that you would get more aggressive, that you try more things than you would early in the season? Yes, definitely, for sure. I know as an athlete yourself, you always want to be aggressive throughout the entire time. But, you know, as the season goes on, you really just have to be more aggressive to help try to build a score up and up each week. Struthi on now for the Panthers, the fourth to compete. And there you can see a different kind of ball. It's called a front pike half, where the athlete comes in on the front and does a pike half, and that is a 10.0 start value from the fifth year senior. And again, another one of those seniors being recognized here this evening. She's actually a graduate student at the occupational therapy program here at Pitt. Last three times on vault, she's had it a 9.825 on each one of her last three attempts. So far, the low score for the Panthers is a 9.75. Definitely a staple here for that pit lineup. So Kiera Thornton had a 9.75, 9.65 for Bingham. Ternaya Brown now up for Bowling Green. Huge Takacha there. It's really, really high above the bar. It's really great to see, again, being really aggressive and having really large release skills, and that was great there from Brown. 
Just the dismount here. Full out, small step on that landing, but a really, really a solid routine there for Bowling Green. Really building back that momentum here for the Falcons. Tonight, just a sophomore from Franklin, Tennessee. Good performance here now for the Panthers. That's going to be for the Panthers, Sierra Ward. And Struthy with a 9-8-7-5. Now we have Sierra Ward, a fifth-year senior from Maryland. Again, another one of the seniors being recognized here tonight. He's been a staple in this vault lineup. Huge Yurchenko full, small back up, step back on the landing. And you can tell Ward is really, really Man, happy with that. All tournament eagle on vault two years ago for Sierra. Sierra has just been an absolute great asset to have here in the Panthers. And I know she's been a really strong leader and athlete and has really brought a lot of energy, as you can tell here, to this Panther lineup. Catherine Wellbacher is up next for Bowling Green as we're waiting for a score. Wellbacher, a junior from Houston. In her career, Olivia, 33 podium finishes in her career. She's been an absolute staple here for the Falcons. And she is slated to compete here in the all-around tonight. So has really been contributing on multiple events all season. So someone that I know Bowling Green is really looking forward to and is excited to have here tonight. Beautiful toe half into a straddle Jaeger. It's huge, huge release skill there. Unfortunately, just a little bit too aggressive there on that handstand right after that release skill. So has to come off the bar. But again, another aggressive mistake here from the Falcons. But you like to see more aggressive mistakes than timid mistakes for sure. So really important here for Wilbacher to Wellbacher to finish up her routine strong. And really when you're competing in the all-around, every half point that you can manufacture. Absolutely, because the way the gymnastics works is there are six competitors that will go up to compete and five scores will count. So they will drop the lowest score. People toe hand straight into a full out this mountain and stuck landing. Really gorgeous finish there to that routine. She needs that men in black pen where she could just say none of what happened before that really happened because that was, when she restarted, that was beautiful. Yeah, it was a gorgeous bar routine and unfortunately had that fall there. But again, being in the all-around, it's really important that you just kind of leave that behind you and move on because you have three other events to help the team out with. Julia Bedminster will finish it off for the Panthers before a few exhibitions. Ranked number five here in the ACC, and yet again, another one of those seniors here for the Panthers. Yurchenko full and has a little bit of a step forward on that landing. It looks like she was almost trying to go for the sticks, just a little bit too hard there. But regardless, there were uh, five scores before that that were really strong, so. Still a really great rotation there for the Panthers. And the lowest score was a 9.75. So depending on what Bedminster ends up with, even if they have to drop her scores, a good first rotation for the Panthers. Yeah, the Panthers definitely had a great rotation. And looks like right now they're at least sitting above a 49. So Izzy Rivelli. Lovac Ben will do an exhibition for BG next. Beautiful to catch up straight down to the low bar there. Then just to the song here left for Ravelli. Gorgeous double layout to a stuck landing. 
What a great way for the Falcons to finish up here uh, over on bars. And unfortunately, we'll have to have, you know, Bowling Green will count one of the falls there, but they'll be able to um, throw out the lowest score from the earlier in the rotation. Obacher with a 9-2-7-5. Bedminster with a 9-6-2-5. So that will be the score that is dropped for the Panthers. We'll be having an exhibition routine here from the Falcons. Love Akbam. A freshman out of Columbus said three seconds and three thirds this year. Ackman is then another one of those really solid competitors here for the Falcons, competing in a lot of different events and contributing in a lot of different ways here for Bowling Green. A little bit close there on that release and a little bit close again on the, the low bar there. But an exhibition routine is really just an opportunity for the athlete to go out and compete and just get some competition experience under their belt without actually having the score count for the team total. So it's really a low pressure situation to show the coach why you deserve to be in the lineup. Izzy Ravelli, the 9-8-5 for Bowling Green. So a good finish for the Falcons on uh, even bars. Panthers are done on vault. We'll give you all the total scores. Tell you what dropped, what's next as we continue. We're through one rotation here. It's the Panthers and Falcons at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Welcome back to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. For only the fourth time this year, the Panthers get at least a 49 on vault to start for new head coach Casey Joe McPherson. 49.025 for Pitt, led by 985, 9875 by Struthi Anand. 985 by Sierra Ward, a couple of 9775s from Kennedy Duke and Raina Garvey, 975 from Rhea Simons. For Bowling Green, great finish to the event with Izzy Ravelli with a 985 for BG. Panthers in the early lead against BG. BG in their 17 year head coach, Kerry Turner, them in the NCAAs was Mac Coach of the Year a few years ago. A two-time captain at Ursinus. There's Turner. As Vault will be up next for the Falcons. And the Panthers move over to uneven bars. Megan Bingham will start out on Vault for BG. Bingham a 9-6-5 on bars. We are underway here in the second rotation now. Starting off strong here with a really nice Yurchenko full, a little bit of a hot back, but again, really powerful and had a great block off of the table. Great way for the Falcons to kick off the second rotation. BG as a team has had at least 194.275 in the last three meets. Looking to get it going there on the second rotation. Faith Lero, the senior, up for the Panthers. Lero really contributing a lot here over on bars and has gone through a lot and really pushed away to get into the lineup here for the Panthers. It's great to see a senior really work back from injury and contribute in a lot of ways. Really unique dismount and a gorgeous double front. And you got that feeling that as she stuck that all of the five years, I believe, for Faith, four, kind of came into 
memory in one split second. That likely will be the fourth straight time she's had at least a 9-7 on bars for Faith Lero. And again, that is Faith's only event that she'll be competing here tonight, but again, what a super great way for her to finish up her career in the field house. Kira Thornton up for Bowling Green. Like we said, Thornton here being an athlete who's competed multiple events and will be competing three here tonight in the field house. Another Yurchenko pull for the Falcons. A little bit of a larger hop back, but again, really, really powerful. A lot of great amplitude. Bingham with a 9-7-7-5, so indeed a good start on vault for Bowling Green. Basically, any score 9-7, 9-8 above is really what you're trying to aim for in the sport of gymnastics. And starting from that 10-0, around a 9-7 to 9-8 is at least looking pretty good there for the lineup. How about Faith Lero? 9-8-5. I do believe that would be Faith's career high, and what a way to get a career high on senior night here. And again, what a really strong start for the Panthers over on bars. Looking to continue on that momentum here with Kennedy Duke being the sophomore who is slated to compete all around here tonight. It's like a mic drop on senior night. Starting off with uh, Maloney, back down to the low bar with a gorgeous pack. Duke really stepping up this season and competing multiple events for the Panthers after competing not as many her freshman year. A great blindfold to double tuck, small step on the landing, but yet again another solid routine for the Panthers. Nine seven five for Kira Thornton. Charnaya Brown up next for Bowling Green. Nine six two five over on bars. Yurchenko pull, a little bit of a side hop on that landing. But I really like to see all these vaults here from Bowling Green have had a lot of great amplitude. Just need a little bit more control on the landings, but regardless, there's been a really strong rotation here so far for the Falcons. Julia Rota Matt, so we have next for the Panthers. Just a freshman from Norway. Nine six five for Kennedy Duke. Rota Mensa competing this week after a little bit of a rest weekend. Not competing this past weekend, but great to see her back in the lineup. Starting off with the Maloney, back into the low bar with a shoot over. A little bit. A little bit crooked there on the grab, but yet nice and vertical. Toe hand straight into a stalter, a nice really unique skill. Straight into a double tuck landing. Unfortunately, it was a little bit over rotated there, so I had to take two steps back. Madison Coburn is up next for the Falcons. He said the Falcons coming off a couple of good meets. And they put that momentum together. May not have had the victory, although did get a win against LIU with a 195-975. Strong Yurchenko pull. Just a small hopping place there on that landing. Really building momentum here for the Falcons over on ball. And Coburn actually competing in the home state of Pennsylvania, where she's from. Being an athlete from Stallone's Gymnastics, basically on the other end of the state. 9725 for Brown, so 
All nine seven two fives or north for Bowling Green. Jordan Ewing up next for the Panthers. Ewing, a junior out of Nova Scotia, being ranked right now number seven in the ACC over on this event. She's been killing it on the floor. Yeah. We'll see a little bit later. Ewing has had a really, really fantastic junior year so far. Being a staple in multiple lineups, being a really aggressive competitor. And that's one of my favorite things to watch over on bars for, for Ewing. Pike Yeager. Ewing does a great job of hitting a lot of handstands here, being nice and vertical and really aggressive. You can see just how she did on that last one. The blindfold, straight into a double tuck. And a gorgeous stuck landing. She fought for that landing. And something that Ewing has been doing week in and week out is fighting through everything. And Bars is one of those events I think I've seen her stick a double tuck probably more times than I've seen her not this competitive season. How about Coburn, a 9-8-7-5 for Maddie. Akpan's up next for Bowling Green. Yet again, a really, really great Yurchenko full from the Falcons. It's a little bit of a hop forward. After some hiccups on bars, good second rotation here from BG. Bowling Green has done a fantastic job here. Just bringing back the momentum after a little bit of a rockier start to the meet. But again, it's been really fantastic over on bars. On, on vault. Emily Todd up next for the Panthers. On bars. Todd, another one of the freshmen here for the Panthers that is really stepped up this year. And another from the UK. Another one from the UK, another international student athlete. She's done a great job being a freshman and really contributing on multiple events. The scores are exploding now. Ewing with a 9-8-5. Akpan with a 9-9. Shoot over from Todd. Back up to the high bar. Just the dismount left here. Blind full. Straight into a double tuck. Small step on the landing. But a really great way for Todd to begin her night here in the field house. That's work in itself, just making sure you get all the high fives after. There's a lot of people to high five, a lot of, a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people to celebrate with. Best part about having a home meet is your whole team is here and you get to celebrate everything. Catherine Wellbacher. Wow. Huge Rachenko full. Just a little bit of foot movement from that right foot, but a fantastic way for Bowling Green to finish off their lineup over on Vault. Now, am I reading it? Her speed seemed accelerated from some of the others. She did have a, a lot higher of a block, and she got into a twist a lot faster. Oh, well, they're happy with the score. And that is a perfect 9.95 for Wellbacher. And I'm assuming that's got to be a career high for her because for that vault, that is the highest score you can possibly get. What a turnaround here for the Falcons. And Shalia Bedminster will finish out, and then we'll have an exhibition potentially here for the Panthers on bars. Beautiful Maloney. Toe hand with a shoot over. Just the dismount left here for Bedminster. Gorgeous double layout. Stuck landing. Did she hold it long enough? It's 
So, in the NCAA, they have now changed the rules where you do have to land your skill and hold it and show control for a certain period of time, at least two seconds. And I would not say that is quite the stick that the NCAA is looking for, but regardless, a really, really great routine. They're awfully mean. Unfortunately, they are. It's pretty infamous in gymnastics to have what's known as the college stick, where you pretty much drill your feet into the ground, salute as fast as you can, and then move. Lauren Bannister will do an exhibition. Senior from Kentucky. Still kind of amazed at the comeback BG has made. I mean, it could have gone one of two ways. And really attacked that second rotation. Even with the exhibition, it was right on money. Yeah, it was a great exhibition ball. And again, <laughs> I think she's excited really about stuck. it. Stuck landing. You can tell she's thrilled with that. And she said, what the heck? Or something of that. Well, you know, the first rotation was kind of, okay, everybody went through. We've seen a, a whole other level here in rotation number two between Pitt and Bowling Green. They've definitely been bringing the fire here for these next two rotations. 9-8 for Bedminster. Now Simons will do an exhibition. hand straight into a gorgeous ray back on the low bar of the shoot over. Simon has a huge bar routine. Really been great to see her over on bars. Blindfold straight into a double tuck. Small step on the landing. A really, really great routine there for Simon. Wow. Bowling Green came alive. The Panthers did well themselves on bars. We're halfway through, and it's getting tighter between the Falcons and Panthers. We'll get you set for rotation three. Add up the scores from the second as we continue. Jeff Hathorne and Olivia Miller here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Bowling Green just blew away their season best on vault. First time, not only they hit 49, but they just shot past 49 to 49.25. The BG Falcons, what a performance. And really, I mean, they, it seemed like they stuck everything. Yeah, Bowling Green really did a fantastic job over on vault, being really, like I said from the beginning, very aggressive. And they were really aggressive over on their vaults and it held a lot of their landings, and they really earned their scores over there. Even the exhibition with Bannister was a 9-8-2-5. Casey Joe McPherson as the Panthers now go on beam and over to the floor are the Falcons. You see the team totals and really after the first rotation, after the struggles for BG having to count a fall, the Panthers had a commanding lead. That now .6, still a good lead, but an opportunity here for BG if they have a second straight good rotation. And for the Panthers and for almost every team, this is the one that you hold your breath a little bit. If Pitt can get through this, you'll, you'll feel good about your last meet of the season at home. The Panthers really just need to go up there and be confident, be aggressive, and that's one of the things that you really like to see over on balance beam. Something that I know this team has really worked hard for is just being confident with all of their landings and just being really, really aggressive. And doing aggressive gymnastics over on beam is one of the best ways to stay focused on one thing at a time. Kennedy Duke, third event of the night. Duke a 9.65 on bars and a 9.775 on vault. Starting here with a series that can swing back layout. Team is a pretty awesome combination of having some really poised and graceful dance while doing some really complicated and 
challenging gymnastic skills with some great leaps, great turns, and a lot of great acro skills as well. You can see here, Duke doing her leap combination, really wanting to make sure you hit 180 degrees over on beam. And just the dismount left here for Duke. Round off, one and a half. Small hop on the landing, but a really great way for the Panthers to lead off this third rotation. I saw Bannister have a successful exhibition on vault. Now she will lead off on floor for Bowling Green. Kennedy Duke mentioned winning the all around last week. For Bowling Green on floor will be Lauren Bannister. Senior from Kentucky. Averaging over 9-7 on floor. Of course, the Falcons taking advantage of the Falcon sound to use in their floor routines. Starting off with the first pass here. Front layout, front full. And over on floor, there's a couple of different combinations that you can do for tumbling passes and it's about really being able to do aggressive gymnastics with the least amount of deductions and make everything look really clean. And your goal is always to pretty much minimize the landing. Have a really controlled landing for each of your tumbling passes. I know we'll see a lot of really great choreography and artistry over on this event as well. Really nice leap combination from Bannister there. Round backhand spring, double tuck, really controlled landing. And a really great way for the Falcons to start off their third rotation here as well. The last few opportunities for Bannister. She's coming off. Four straight, at least nine sevens on floor. You would think that that trend is going to continue after that performance. Kennedy Dukey, nine eight two five. Really great way for the Panthers to start off that rotation. Todd here has a lot of great rhythm over on beam. I just, one of my favorite things about watching her is just she looks really poised. And you can tell from all of her dances are very precise, along with the gymnastics obviously being fantastic. Switch half to split jump. Back hand swing, back layout. Made that look relatively effortless. And a gorgeous front tuck full dismount to a stuck landing. These teams have really picked it up here in the last couple of rotations. This Brosco will be up next for Bowling Green. 9-7-5 for Bannister, so that streak of at least having a 9-7 on the floor continues. He's from Pennsylvania. As you mentioned, three podiums, two wins this year. Bowling Green so far has done a really great job of bringing the energy to each of their events. Being a, an away competitor and, again, not having a, as many competitions here in the field house, they've done a great job just being able to bring their own energy from their team, and I know they have some fans here. Unfortunately, one and a half front full, a little bit 
crooked on the landing, so we'll have to have that fall there. Switch leg, switch half, popa. Another great leg combination. on if I can't swing. Double tuck. A little bit under rotated to have to take that chest down, step forward landing. So unfortunately I fall in that routine there for the Falcons, but yet again there are six scores that will there are six be six routines and five scores that actually count. So a score that Bowling Green will be looking forward to drop. Emily Todd with a 9-9 nine, nine. after a 9-8-2-5. Jordan Ewing with her new head coach. For Todd, I also do think that's got to be a career high again for her. Being a freshman, I believe that's the first time she's hit a 9-9 nine, nine all season over on beam. Like we said, Ewing over on beam. Another one that's, like we said, on bars. Just a competitor that is really aggressive. Talk about aggressive gymnastics. That is what you will see from Ewing no matter what. Todd has no, not only never had a 9-9, she's never had a 9-8 until today. So definitely surpasses her career high. That is the conclusion of that comment. Back hand swing, back layout, step out. A little bit unsure of that landing there, but is able to remain composed as she continues on with the rest of the routine. Switch leap. Let's see. Switch half. Split jump to feet jump. And just the dismount here. Gain her full to a gorgeous stuck landing. And what a way for Ewing to fight there through that routine. Yeah, she did. And you know, each one of those tenths of points, half of points, could be a big difference as Friska, the 8825 for Bowling Green. Eddie Coburn is up next for Bowling Green. But two stellar opening scores of 9.825 and 9.9 on beam for the Panthers. And they still have Garvey, Foy, Copperweed to go. Yeah, Pitt has really picked up momentum over on beam. Is looking forward to continuing that through their lineup here. See Coburn here over on floor looking to pick up the momentum for the Falcons. Last two floors, 9-8-9-7-2-5. First pass front through to double tuck. I don't think I saw the judges raise their hand there. You can see the lines being out of bounds, but I don't believe she went out of bounds. You can put your foot on the line, but not over it. Coburn prepares for her second pass. Round up by Kingspring. Double pike. 
great landing. You can see the emotion on her face there as she finishes that pass. A great way for the Falcons to bring it back over on floor. Raina Garvey is like anxious and ready to go. Garvey is one of those athletes that always has, usually has a smile on her face and is very excited and really is a great leader, only being a sophomore here. She actually competed at the NCAA Regionals over on this event last year. They were held in Pittsburgh. Three straight events, 9 8 on beam. It's featured on the ACC network, which is cool. Raina, again, just is somebody who just brings a lot of joy to this sport, and it's really great to see her being so young and bringing a lot of energy to this Panther team. That came from the layout step out. A little bit crooked on her landing there, but again is able to remain composed and stay on the beam. Front tuck. Again, a little bit timid on these landings here today. But she's really fighting through the routine here. Split jump to double stag. the dismount left here for Garvey. Front gainer. A little bit of a step on the landing. But again, stays on the beam. A solid routine for the Panthers. 9.75 for Coburn for Bowling Green. Akpen is up next for the Falcons. Next up for Bowling Green on Polish Love Just a freshman and a See a run up against spring double pike. Really nice landing. You want to see the athletes have their chest up and the controlled landing, and she does that there. Not enough that can spring double tuck. A really great landing here for Akpin. Switch side to Popa Popa. She's really done a great job with the artistry over on the floor. So not only do you want to have great tumbling passes, but it's really important that you show off your routine and make it a real performance. Front layout, front pull. You can see your teammates are really excited for her over there in the corner. Big smile on her face. Happy about routine as well. And with a good routine. Two good ones so far for BG. Both 9.75. Brenna Garvey, 9.625. And Foy is up next for the Panthers. Over on B. This will be Foy's third time competing beam this season. Foy, a, a junior here who's really looking to continue on her competitive career and get a lot of great experience. And, Unfortunately, a little bit 
crooked on that side aerial, so it has to come off. See the score for Akpe. Nine eight seven five. That came screen back layout. Step out. Cartwheel side aerial gainer pull. A cartwheel gainer pull. Stuck landing. And again, unfortunately she had to come off the beam there. Kara Thornton will be up next for Bowling Green on the floor. BG pick up the teammate. A couple of 9.75s and 9.875. Now Thornton and Wellbacher. Panthers still have Hallie Copperweed to go on beam. a lot of great momentum here over on floor from the Falcons. First pass front through to double tuck. Again, inbounds there. Her foot did not go over the line. Four straight times she's been 9-8 or higher on floor. It's been really great that been a staple in this lineup here and someone who the Falcons can really count on to always put up a great routine. From the face, even just the, from the gymnastics to the facial expressions, she's really doing a great job of selling the performance. I can spring double pipe. Lose that front foot just a little bit. Really great routine there, yet again for the Falcons. That timed out well for Thornton. As one competitor each, and it will have a couple of exhibitions as well for one for each team. Next to be for the Panthers, Hallie We have the last competitor here for the Panthers over on beam. We have Hallie Copperweed, standout athlete here for the Panthers, competing in the NCAA regional in the all around as a sophomore and actually over on beam as a freshman in the NCAA regional. Switch leap to split jump and just like we saw with Todd, Copperweed is another one of those athletes who just the rhythm of her entire routine is just beautiful and she moves through all of her skills and holds all of her landings really accentuates everything. Her posture is really good. Absolutely. She just has a great, great poise over on beam. You can see that handsome back layout step out. She just holds that landing. Just someone that the Panthers can always count on here in this lineup. Dependable athlete, both inside and outside of the gym. Side aerial there, which actually she just did a video for Pit Official and was posted on the Instagram on a how to do a side aerial. Now we just saw it live in competition. Just the dismount left here for Copper Wheat. That was, Round up one that and was a half. well done. And a really, really great routine for the Panthers. And for those that believe in announcer jinxes, I think we set up about 12 different potential 
falling points for Hallie, and she powered through all the jinxes. Absolutely. Gordon, a 985. Next to beat for Bowling Green is Catherine Wellbacher. Wellbacher now, as this is getting tight between the Panthers and Falcons. Junior with a career 9-7-4-5 average on floor. Like we said, Wellbacher is one of those athletes that we will be seeing on all four events this evening. So competing in the all-around. As an all-around athlete, every event counts and will create a total score for the individual athlete. It's another opportunity for a podium finish here. Really good one, I think it looks so easy. The best athletes really, really do make it look effortless, but as a gymnast, you definitely, uh, there's a Same, lot, there's of, a lot of effort going into that. There's a lot of effort going into making it look effortless. Double pike, and a really great landing, making it look effortless. But you, you know, as the last pass, everybody's always just a little bit tired, but she's fantastic landings and a really, really great way for the Falcons to finish up over on floor. Backpans 9875 could be in danger there with that performance by Wellbacher. Hallie Copperwitty, 9825. She's second only to her teammate and fellow Brit, Emily Todd. Now from the UK to north of the UK to Norway and Rotomanzo. Back hand swing, back layout, step out. A little bit of loose knees there on that layout. A really great landing, chest up. Gorgeous front tuck. You can see she was just a little bit off there with her feet, but really fights through to stay on the beam. Switch lead to what I would call a splash down. Gorgeous ring jump there. It's always great to see a lot of variety here from these athletes over on beam. And Rota Massa does a great job there. Bringing a lot of diversity and unique skills to the NCAA. And a great routine. This is an exhibition routine for Pitt. So yet again, another opportunity for an athlete to get competitive experience but not have their score actually count towards the team total. That was a phenomenal routine to do as an exhibition. And from exhibition to exhibition, we'll see another one over on floor here for the Falcons. Parente now for Bowling Green. Bowling Green nearly with two straight season highs in back-to-back. -back. A season high in vault and just .025 away from a season high on floor. 
Yeah, Bowling Green has done a really, really great job of staying poised and just being confident from each athlete to each athlete. And you've seen that show here tonight as we've moved through each of the rotations. They've really just been able to build each time. The Panthers have been performing well on floor. They will go to floor to wrap this up and PG over to the beam. Let's see for our second pass here. Over on floor. Round off by Pan Spring. Double pipe. A little bit short there on that landing, so her chest is a little bit down, has to take a step forward. But a great Solid exhibition routine for the Falcons. So that'll do it. Two exhibitions and the six competitors. And this match that was far apart is now very tight as we head into the final rotation as you're watching women's college gymnastics from the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. We're at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse where ACDC should be mandated at every event. I think so too. I, I've always been a big ACDC fan. I know. Have you really? Oh yeah. My dad has played ACDC for me since I was... I knew I liked them. Five or six. <laughs> a second straight 49 plus for Bowling Green and they have climbed right back in this as we head to the final rotation. Falcons go over to B. 9-8-5 from Thornton. 9 8 from Akpan and Wellbacher on floor for BG as you see how close we are between the Panthers and Falcons. As the Panthers discussed before heading over to floor, Sierra Ward will lead that off for Pitt. Serena Ross will start for BG. As you see, the momentum definitely with the Falcons right now. It's been since 02 that Bowling Green has won at Pitt. It's always great to see a, a tight race coming into the final rotation here. And yet again, this is the final meet for Pittsburgh in their home facility, the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. And only a couple more years left of this facility from a gymnastics standpoint. Anyhow, Victory Heights, the new gymnastics, volleyball, and wrestling home of the Panthers is currently under construction just down the hill from where we are right now. That facility is going to be crazy. The facility should be absolutely fantastic. I know there's been a lot of really, a lot of like donations, a lot of excitement surrounding the Victory Heights project and it will feature actually a new training facility and competition facility for gymnastics, wrestling, and volleyball. Serena Ross will lead off 975 coming up high at Ohio State on beam for Ross. Yeah. Ross being a senior here. Being one of those seniors that will be recognized here tonight. The first time we've seen Ross here this evening. Starting off with a backhand spring layout step out. Really aggressive, solid landing here. Pat leap into front aerial to Sassone. Really great combination pass there. Feet jump into a double stag, another really unique jump combination. Full, small hop in the landing there. But a really, really strong start for the Falcons to carry over that momentum from floor over to beam for their last event. BG had a 
1.15 on bars and 49.25 on vault and a 49.1 on floor. Talk about a comeback for sure. Bowling Green has been fighting tooth and nail through the remainder of this meet here, and hopefully they don't let their foot off the gas here. Sierra Ward for the Panthers. This will be her final competitive routine right. here in the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse after five years of being a staple competitor for the Panthers. She competes one last routine here tonight to close out her career in the Fieldhouse. Her first pass here, front layout, front full front layout. A lot of great amplitude. It's great to see both of those bounding passes being the same height, if not higher, on the second pass. And she does a fantastic job there. Another thing to watch out here for the Panthers is just the, all of the choreography. It's fantastic. Assistant coach Lena had done all of these routines, and they all are fantastic performances. from board. Gorgeous front, Rudy. A great finish here for her final routine in the field house. Fifth year Sierra Ward. A lot of excitement for her. Heckpan with a 9875 over on floor. Now we'll try it on beam after a 975 from Serena Ross. Heckpan actually coming off of a career high 9825 last weekend against Illinois. Spring layout step out, just a small balance check there in the landing. Really, really unique there. It's actually a, a side arrow two foot landing. It's really difficult skill as well. Round off one and a half to a stuck landing. Just carrying on momentum from routine to routine here for the Falcons. Really found a rhythm. Sierra Ward, last time on the floor here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, a 9.85. Great way for Ward to finish out her routine and a really, really great score for Ward. And Potentially, maybe a career high there for her as well. Kennedy Duke. Now Kennedy Duke, Panthers all around contestant, participant, athlete, all of it. Coming off the win at West Virginia in the all around. Coming off with the first pass, round if I can spring double tuck. Ring leap towards play half.
just the final pass here for Duke. Down up by canceling one and a half. Front layout. Gorgeous landing. You can see the smile on her face there as well. Six times this year that Duke has done the all around. A great finish here to her evening. It's been so great to see Duke back in the lineups and really making an impact. Becoming a staple in all four of the events. And only so much more room to grow here as she's only a sophomore. Speaking of young, Akpan, the freshman, 9-7-7-5 on team. It is one score on, on either side, really high, or the other way that is going to decide this here tonight. Parente. A canceling layout, step out. Great landing. Freshman from Medina. Side aerial, and you can tell she just off in the beginning there, so it has to come off the beam, unfortunately. Found off one and a half dismount. A little bit of a hop, but again, an unfortunate fall, so something that the Falcons would be probably looking to drop this score. But a great finish to her routine. up for the Panthers is Kaylee Larson. Actually, a fun fact about Kaylee Larson is that before NCAA gymnastics, she was actually a power tumbler. Define. Yeah, so power tumbling is another one of those sports that is gymnastics related, but focuses basically only on the tumbling aspect. So she had competed is a power tumbler while also doing club gymnastics competing on four different events but she also had a primary focus on tumbling and competed in those competitions as well some different requirements and different level of tumbling was required for power tumbling than the regular sport of artistic gymnastics anytime you put power in front of something it sounds cool <laughs> like power ranger power rangers are also cool yeah Larson was awesome earlier this year, the 9-9 career high for the freshman. She's done a fantastic job just really showing up on this event and being a staple in the floor lineup. A really strong competitor. She's done a fantastic job over here so far tonight. An athlete that you can just tell has just grown so much since her first meet here this, se this season. Another great routine for Larson from the freshman here from California. So Kaylee Larson, the third on floor for Pitt. Three have gone for Bowling Green on beam. Riska is up next. Looking to drop a 9-1-5 are Falcons. Broska, another one of those athletes that's also from the state of Pennsylvania, being from the middle of the state, competing at Central Bucks Gymnastics, so back in her home state here. A can spring layout, layout, and a really strong fight there to stay on the beam. Actually, a really, really difficult series to do with three acro elements instead of just two. I 
mentioned from the beginning, these gymnasts going for it here in March. Yeah, March is really the time where, at this point in the season, you've been hopefully getting a lot of the beginning of the season jitters out of the way, and you've really honed in on a lot of your your competition skills and rely a lot on your experience. So that way you're confident in each of your routines. And actually, we, in the NCAA gymnastics, we've just moved to now ranking teams by what's called the NQS, and that is called the National Qualifying Score. So in the sport of NCAA gymnastics, what they do is they'll take your top six scores from your whole season, and three of them must be from away competitions, and they are going to drop the high and then average the remaining five. So they'll take six scores, three must be away, drop the high, and average those five. And that is what gives you that national qualifying score, which allows teams to qualify to the NCAA postseason, starting off with NCAA regionals, which will be happening here in just a few weeks. Emily Todd now with her third event of the night. So the Panthers widening their lead a little. Just go with a 9-6 for Bowling Green. Starting off here with the double pike. And I don't think she quite went out of bounds there, so it really hangs on to staying in bounds in that landing. Pull. Take just a little bit of a leg separation there in that front layout. That's the last pass here for Todd. Round up by Cancering. Double tuck. A bit of a chest down landing, but covers it up well with that land lunge. Great routine there for Todd. And a great way for the Panthers to continue on their momentum over on the floor exercise. And you can see there, it's like somebody's earring might have gotten stuck on <laughs> somebody's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Bingham has a 9.65 on bars, 9.775 on vault, now on beam. Spring layout, step out. Great landing, being aggressive and having a chest up. And like we've seen from a lot of the Bowling Green athletes over on beam, yet again, they're just really honed in and competitive and they're being very, very aggressive on everything. Which is the way you really want to try to finish out a meet here. He jump to split three quarters. Round off one and a half. A little bit of a hot board on that landing, but a really solid routine yet again for Bowling Green. They've done a great job of really bringing back the momentum here. Catherine Wellbacher will close it out then an exhibition for BG on B. Leah Bedminster is up next after a 9-7 from Emily Todd. And the remaining next two athletes here over on floor, on floor for Julia Pittsburgh ben actually Jensen. are both tied right now as ranked fifth in the NCAA on this event. So finishing up the meet here for the Panthers with a treat of a floor routine, that is for sure. Bedminster in 27 events has had at least a 9-7 in all but two. One of those just really incredible statistics here for Bedminster. Just a testament to how much of an asset as being this senior transfer from Long Island University. 
He's really brought a lot to this program. He's helping to elevate the gymnastics. Not enough back handspring, double tough. When we talk about performance, we definitely think of people like Bedminster. All around, not only just doing great gymnastics, but sells this routine like no other. A really fun athlete to watch. Her final pass, round off by Kingspring, one and a half front layout. Great landing. Fantastic floor routine from Bedminster, and you can just see the excitement being her final routine here in the field house. Megan Bingham with a 9.825 for BG on the beam. Catherine Wellbacher is up next after that really good routine by Julia Bedminster. This will be the final athlete here for Bowling Green that will be counting towards the score. Wellbacher with a 9.875 on floor and a 9.95 on vault tonight. Yeah, so that's that perfect score over on vault being that 9.95, considering she did a Yurchenko full. I really like the extension that we see here from Wellbacher over on beam. She just has really great long lines for all of her gymnastics. Just another athlete who can just tell is, looks very confident in selling the routine. Front toss to beat jump. Just the dismount there. Front tuck gainer full. Bacher's yeah. had herself quite a meet here. Yeah, she's really had, she's competed in the all-around here, had three really strong performances. Did a great job here tonight for Bowling Green. One struggle on bars, other than that, has been really good. It's just a testament to, again, being a seasoned competitor and just being able to kind of shake off that first routine and remain focused and really work through the rest of your meet here and give the team what they need. Nine, nine for Jalea Bedminster. Now Jordan Ewing. Like we said here, Ewing being a really phenomenal competitor, being tied with her teammate Bedminster as ranked fifth in the ACC conference right now over on this event. Bedminster set that bar. Last seven times on floor, Jordan Ewing has averaged 988. Another really, really great statistic here for Ewing. One and a half front layout, and she just really sells all of her landings, holding them, just letting the judges know that there's nothing to take there on that pass. I know Ewing really gives Bedminster a run for her money here when it comes to selling a performance. She just commands attention from all of her tumbling to her leaps to her dance to her facial expressions. off by can't spring. Double cup. Really great landing. And a really phenomenal routine for Ewing. You can just tell how excited she is. She 
Jordan Ewing following up Bedminster's 9-9. This will be an interesting score for Jordan. Absolutely. Just did a lace-out performance there for Pittsburgh and finishing up the last competitive routine that will count for the score. The final competitor tonight here over on Bean for Bowling Green is an exhibition. There's an opportunity for this athlete to go out and compete. Kaylee Bokey. Junior from not far from here, Bridgeport, West Virginia. Tough handspring layout, step out, really nice aggressive landing. On the eternal competition between Bedminster and Ewing, Ewing beat her. 9-9-2-5 to a 9-9 for Bedminster. And Casey Joe McPherson, you like that internal competition, pushing each other and finishing with two huge scores. In the last two floor routines here in the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse today. For this the, year. That's one, of, yeah, that's one of the best things that you see in college gymnastics is that it's no longer really just an individual sport. It's really about the team. And you can see there Bowling Green really having an emotional time with being celebrating a teammate. And that's really what you like to see being in NCAA as compared to club gymnastics. It's club gymnastics, it's really about the individual and trying to hit your routine to get your best score. Then we move on to events here and we have the opportunity to contribute to the team and we have here senior fifth year Erin Hutchison competing for her first time this season as an exhibition routine over on floor it'll be the first time that we've seen her this entire season and it's great to see her Double full, really difficult pass there for Hutchinson being rated an E, which is one of the hardest skills, and it's not the hardest skill rating that you can do in the sport of gymnastics in the NCAA. So not for easy. E is not for easy, that is for sure. If anything, it's E for extraordinary. Hutchinson will be the last competitor here tonight. Pokey, by the way, 9675 with the exhibition. There's that ground up one and a half front layout. The entire team come out to celebrate what Aaron has done. It's been a really interesting meet. One where the Panthers got off to a quick start and Bowling Green struggled. And then Bowling Green got a season high and came on and fought hard. We'll have individual winners and wrap up with final scores here from the University of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, as you're watching Women's College Gymnastics. And we will go down to public address announcer Colin Sisk for the scores from tonight's meet. And this time, for final scores, will be in the order of champions. champions. First on vault. Your event champion on vault with a score of 9.950. For the Bowling Green Falcons, Catherine Wellbacher.
We'll next move on to the uneven bars. On bars, it's a three-way tie with a score of 9.850. For the Bowling Green Falcons, Isabella Ravelli. And for your Pitt Panthers, Faith Lero and Jordan Ewing. We'll next move to the balance beam. On beam, your champion with a score of 9.90. For the Pitt Panthers, Emily Todd. We'll next move to the floor exercise. Your event winner on floor exercise with a score of 9.925. For the Pitt Panthers, it's Jordan Ewing. We'll now move to the all-around competition. Your winner on all-around with a score of 39.025. For the Pitt Panthers is Kennedy Duke. We'll move to our team final scores. In second place with a team score of 195.225. The Bowling Green Falcons. And your winners of tonight's meet with a team score of 195.80, your Pitt Panthers. Fans, we thank you for joining us at tonight's meet, but So the Pitt Panthers end up with victory here over Bowling Green. Jeff Hathorne, Olivia Miller. Hey, Olivia, what a performance by Bowling Green after a tough bars rotation. They really fought back to make this a tight competition. Yeah, they really did a great job just fighting tooth and nail for every tenth they can get. And unfortunately, it wasn't just quite enough tonight, but a really great finish to their meet here. Two straight all-around titles for Kennedy Duke, and the Panthers get a win before they go to a Nashville Invitational, then the first ever ACC championship. They've definitely got a lot of momentum moving into postseason here in the last two meets of the season. So looking to just continue to build, continue to build confidence, and just fine-tune a couple of things before conference championships. And that'll do it here on Senior Night at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse for Olivia Miller and our outstanding crew. I am Jeff Hathorne saying good night from Pittsburgh, where the Panthers beat Bowling Green in women's college gymnastics.